Greetings EV World, Victoria Electric Vehicle Association here with a short video on how to make sure that your charging events at a direct current fast charging network lead to a good charge and no damage to either the connector or your car. Aha! Plug in the cable and press start. Hey, this so, is good, so now we can inspect a cable. Now let's have a look at the cable. This is the Chedemo, the big mother that that is. And we'll have a look at the inside. What do you see there, Julian? Well, okay, so we want to take a look inside these connectors to make sure there's no damage. Now, I can see some damage right away. I can see that the edge of this connector is pretty pounded and beaten. It's, it's really dented and smashed. That's not the end of the world because these are your big DC electrical conductors here. And these guys are for communication ports. You will notice that this one here is missing a chunk or folded over. So technically this plug is at the end of its service life and should be replaced. So that's something that we should report through the app as needing attention, otherwise this will cause problems. I don't see any carbon, I don't see anything burned, I don't see anything melted. So I'd say this is probably pretty safe to, to use in the car. I, can, I don't know how well you can see in there, I'll turn on a flashlight, but there are little communication pins in there. If you look inside here, you can see these little wire pins. Well, none of them are damaged right now they all appear to be straight uh, the only damage is yeah this piece of plastic which is folded right over there anyway this thing's okay to plug in and charge no trouble to use this on any chatamo vehicle but it is important to check that before you get started now we'll look at the port on the car if we open up the charge port we want to check to make sure it's nice and dry inside we want to make sure there's no bent or broken components and make sure that uh, there, there's no indication of any damage or any burning or sit or anything like that. Everything in here looks really clean and nice. Inside the, the main uh, conductors, it looks really good. Nothing's burned. We're, go we're good to plug in now. Perfect. When you plug in the Chatamo connector, uh, just like you saw Heather giving it a really good hard push, when you go in all the way with the Chatamo connector, this button will pop back and you'll hear a loud click. Once that's done, then the machine can be turned on and authorized, just as Glenn has done, and you'll see the charge light indicating we've got power going through the cord. And as we can see here, the charge is happening. We've been 38 seconds into it, working up to uh, getting our first uh, full kilowatt hour, and uh, the car's got a lot into it. So this has been a successful connection, and uh, all is good. Oh, now we're going to show you how to use a Chatamo uh, charge station with a Tesla Chatamo adapter. Um, it's basically the same as the last procedure. Same as the last procedure. These guys plug right into each other. Only we're going to use an adapter instead of plugging right into the car. When you line these guys up, they, they only fit one way. There's a couple of uh, raceways right here that fit into little slots in the charge adapter so you can't screw it up. You just click it in, make sure you hear a really good loud click, and make sure this says OK. This is a, uh, 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 it's a switch. When it, when it shows red, you're not OK. When you push it in and it clicks, the handle pops back. Now you know you're OK. As soon as the charger is turned on, Glenn's going to turn it on or power it up. We're going to use this little uh, spot right here to open up the charge port on the car. Okay, here we go, we push this guy. And as long as that uh, T is white, you can put that in. Blue means it's checking stuff out. It's gonna charge or change to green as soon as the vehicle starts to accept the charge. The red light on the handle has illuminated. So now we've got some power transfer. The green light indicates the vehicle's now charging. And if we look down here on the front of the Chatamo adapter, there's another indicator that's telling us we are good to go. Not every Tesla is set up to accept a CCS uh, charge. So what we're going to do here is uh, outside, we'll show you the physical adapter. And what you need to do is check inside the car because not every car has the uh, physical hard hardware on board that allows you to use a CCS. So come here. This is in the software page. You go to additional vehicle information. And if you look down here, CCS adapter support enabled. That tells you this car is good to go for CCS charging.
this guy's okay. Now, there's no terminals in here. These are just dummies, but we still like to make sure nothing's bent or broken. This guy's okay. This is where the power is exchanged in a CCS combo charger. And if we look down inside these these uh, terminals, everything is really good looking. It's nice, it's clean. There's no, no issues uh, inside here. So this cable's good to go. Now we're gonna check out the uh, CCS combo adapter for Tesla. You can order these online or you can visit Motorize to buy one uh, with good old batch. Yeah, Motorize has these in stock. They're 399 bucks and if you buy it from Motorize, it comes with a lifetime warranty. And if you buy it online, it does not. Okay. So here's the adapter. It's a pretty neat little unit. Uh, it's really, really simple. It only has one moving part, which is this little lock right here. So we're just gonna install this on the handle. I see the rubber cover on our, on our uh, button is ripped off, so supposed to lock on. Yeah, there we go. Okay. All right, we've got a white light. We're good to go. There we go. It's blue. It's thinking. We can hear the DC fast charge machine click to turn on. And we're charging. It's charging at 27 kilowatts right now. Right. So 130 six kilometers per hour 27 kilowatts which is probably normal for this because your battery's almost full and it's only a 50 kilowatt machine uh, back to charging safety 101 we've talked about uh, checking out uh, your charge connectors make sure they're in good shape well here i've got an example of a j1772 uh, port which is on its way to failure so the anatomy of the port is pretty simple obviously everybody knows they just click together like so. You've got a, a, a push button release here. Uh, upon first inspection, you wanna make sure that there's nothing broken with this handle. If this little latch piece is broken off, don't use the connector. It is uh, connected to a micro switch inside the handle. And what's supposed to happen, part of the protocol for this type of uh, charge uh, unit, is that when you push on the handle and the latch uh, lifts up to, dis to disconnect, it actually breaks the electrical circuit because of a switch that's under the handle. So if you use one of these and this end piece here is broken off and can't latch, you might be inclined to just remove the connector. But instead of uh, removing the connector with no power, it's gonna be fully juiced up while you pull it out because you don't have to push the button. That causes an overheat situation in the pins and the connectors. So if you have a look inside here, uh, you'll notice that we've got three large terminals and two small terminals. The small terminals are just for communication. They handle what's called a, a handshake protocol and that allows the car to talk to the charge cable before any actual power is transmitted. This is a neutral and it doesn't carry any load. That is a hot and that is a hot. So each one of these is responsible for carrying 220 or 230 or 240 volts and each side carries 15 amps, it's alternating current. Now you'll notice this one here is bright silver and this one here is darker. This one is darker because it's been overheated. And because it's been overheated, the quality of the connection will be poor, which will lead to additional heat, which will further cook it, which will further deteriorate the quality of the connection. So as soon as I noticed this was dark, I immediately removed this from service and replaced it with a new plug right away. You'll notice on the other side here, we've got the corresponding pins. You'll notice one is light and one is dark. So when you're inspecting your, your charge port plugs, just make sure that they're both silver and they're both the same color and you're good to go. If you see any discoloration on those or if you see any telltale signs of any kind of heat, if the edge of the connector looks like it's been melted or really hot, uh, or if it smells like it's been in your barbecue burning, uh, you need to stop using it right away and get that replaced. Uh, you can call Motorize or you can call your local dealer for any information regarding these uh, parts and uh, that's it. Stay and, safe. And just to make it clear, this is alternating current only, not direct current fast charging. Now we're going to talk about the Tesla urban uh, and regular superchargers. So this, we're at Uptown Shopping Center here in Victoria. Uh, this is pretty common. This is a smaller uh, Tesla charging station. It's called an urban supercharger. Supercharger means it's using direct current. You'll notice it's got a really large diameter cable feeding power to this uh, universal power connector. This is uh, all, you, all you're gonna see when you pull into a Tesla charging station. 
Before you get started with the charger though, there's something you need to know about parking. Uh, whether you're going to pull in forward, which this placement of the terminal in relation to the parking stall allows for a forward park job, you're going to pull up until the front tires hit the curb. You just bump gently up against the curb. When you've done that, you know that the charge port will be perfectly positioned for reach from this cable. Um, if you're pulling into a Tesla charge stall, a supercharger stall, and you're going to back in, as in um, just like these other stalls over here, the, charge, the charger location is at the back of the stall. All you have to do is back your vehicle in, keep it centered between the lines, and make sure that the back tires hit the curb. As soon as the back tires are placed gently against the curb, the, the reach is going to be perfect. When you get out of the vehicle, you can manually open the charge port from inside the car, or you can skip that and there's two, two more ways to open it. All you need to do is pick up the handle, lift it up, and pull it straight out. You'll notice it's perfectly lined up. You can either push the button to open up the charge port, or if you don't want to push the button, there's another way, you can just touch it. Or not. It doesn't like me now. Anyway, we talked about inspecting charge ports. Tesla charge ports are extremely reliable. They're capable of handling a huge amount of energy, much more than we normally use with home or regular supercharging. This port appears to be in great condition. There's no dirt, there's no uh, wasp nest, there's no twigs, there's nothing, and everything looks like it's in perfect condition. We're gonna take a look at this uh, charge cord here. I see the, the connectors are both silver. They both appear to be in the same condition. The little communication pin on the inside has a uh, black sort of bullet shaped top on it to help it guide into the charge uh, connector. Those are in excellent condition. It is a little bit dusty and dirty, but really it, it appears to be in excellent condition. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in. You can see the car's thinking. That'll go to green in just a moment. moment and the car is going to check out the temperature of the battery and a few other factors before it decides how much energy to let in and the, the great thing about the Tesla port is this uh, same uh, charger head is both for alternating current out of your home or for direct current fast charging at a Tesla supercharger it's true one connector to rule them all. Well, thanks for being here. I'd like to thank Julian for uh, coming by and uh, providing his expertise as well. Uh, Victoria EV Association wants you to get out, enjoy all your great uh, vehicles. Uh, we've given you some uh, tips on how to keep your vehicles healthy. If you do see a, a direct current fast charger that is not in good shape, make sure you report it to the network owner. And I'll just leave off with one, the word from Heather, our Vice President. Oh, have a very Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. See you next year.